Hello everyone and welcome to the B stream. We are starting with group D, am I right? Yes, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here, I'm Orange and I'm here with VLPS. Uh, we are gonna watch Camlin versus Gara. Um, two pretty well-known players. Gara obviously been around for forever and uh, Camlin being this uh, German very popular streamer. Uh, known for Hunter as, as far as I know. Uh, yeah, one of the guys that popularized the face secret hunter. Yeah. That took Storm on ladder against the midrange shaman meta that we had back then. Yeah, uh, that deck was pretty great. I it sucks that uh, these days Hunter is in a really really bad spot. Yeah, meta is a little bit too fast for the the hunters right now. But uh, yeah. yeah, so we're starting Group D now, and we have our first match: Camlin versus Gara, and uh, the bans I believe for Gara on Cam so Camlin brought Rogue. Priest, Shaman, and Warrior. Yep. And Gara brought Warrior, Paladin, Shaman, and Warlock. And yep. the bands were Gara banned Camlin's uh, Rogue and Camlin banned uh, Gara's Warlock. Yes, exactly. Uh, going by those bands, uh, yeah, we were kind of expecting, we were talking a little bit before the series, kind of expecting Gara to bring this Dragon Warrior because that's generally the warrior that does a little bit worse. Um, against Rogue, uh, comparing to uh, to the Pirate Warrior that you play otherwise. Mm -hmm. And uh, from Camlin, uh, banning the Warlock, this Warrior could be anything really. Yeah, we don't see Camlin's cards quite yet. Um, waiting mm -hmm. on an invite on uh, him to show us his cards here. We do see on uh, Gara's side, it looks to be a Dragon Warrior with the Curator package, the Fierce yeah. Monkey package yeah. that most people are now running. Yeah, it's. Uh, I feel like the curator has been pretty necessary in uh, Dragon Warrior since you're putting in all these low impact pirates. You need uh, some way to build card advantage later in the game. Yeah, you need the refill. You also need, um, you know, if you're going with a Dragon Warrior strategy, you're probably going with an anti aggro strategy. You know, having those mid game taunts versus pirate warrior or aggro shaman comes into uh, comes into play and helps out a lot. Yeah. We see uh, Camlin here with uh, the pretty key uh, Alex Ross's champion to kill Buccaneer. If you uh, if you miss your two drop or say have like Fire Dragon or something, it's very very easy to uh, fall behind. But I would say that Gara has the even more important card in Fire War Axe. Yeah, huge card right there. Oh, ooh, Camlin with the upgrade. So we have some type of uh, dragon pirate hybrid going on. That is really interesting on Camlin's side. Yeah, I I don't think I've seen I don't think I've seen a uh, Dragon list with uh, upgrade in that tops yeah. out a Draconoid Crusher. I've seen some hybrid lists that kind of top out at maybe a Zerg Drake or you know Blackwing Corruptor, but to run the Draconoid Crushers with mm. the with the upgrade package seems uh, seems to be unique. So, so do you play Arcanite Reaper then too? Yeah, it's tough because if you're if you're playing the Draconoid Crushers, I'm assuming you're also playing Drakes and Black you know yeah. Blackwing Corruptors. Then do you really fit in the the uh, you know the Arcanite Reapers as well? Seems a bit excessive at the five five slot. Yeah, I, I totally agree. But uh, I guess Camlin has done a lot of testing for this event, and uh, I've not really played this deck, so we're gonna see how it works out for him. And yeah, Gar here again with the initiative, having that war axe and drawing the second one as well. Um, I don't mind the uh, the coining of the Corcoran if he wants to really make a huge tempo play and taking out the uh, the one two small time Buccaneer. Me, me neither. I think uh, Corcoran Elite is one of the cards that is uh, really hard to get good value out of, uh, from in this matchup. Also, if you uh, just play it on turn 4 and not coin it out here, it goes straight into your opponent's Blackwing Corruptor turn. So I think this is a great spot to maximize the value you can get out of that, cor that Corcoran. The only awkward part is being that on the next turn we're at 4 mana. Uh, yeah, you actually have Fire Dragon plus War Axe. Yeah, exactly. Next turn. So it actually out. does uh, plan out, uh, play out really well. Yeah, Gar decides to save the coin. Uh, just play the Fierce Monkey. Kind of cross his fingers. Hope Camlin doesn't have a weapon to activate this plus two uh, attack on the small time. But we do see the Nazoth's Pirate top deck as well as the upgrade that he had, you know, prior. Yeah, although that doesn't build like the. The biggest weapon. If I were Camlan, I'd probably just play this Twilight Guardian and try to set up for a better uh, weapon turn uh, the Agreed. following turn. Yeah, just a better tempo play. You know, you wanna, you really don't want to lose board control in this matchup. It's a very yeah. tempo-driven matchup, and 
the three six body is just you know the better the better tempo play here. Yeah. Oh, Frothing Berserker seems like a great pickup here. Um, I would really don't mind the Frothing Berserker coin war axe play. You give your opponent a easy way to deal with your fierce monkey, but then the best way to deal with uh, the Frothing Berserker would be to cork on elite it. And uh, if your opponent does that, I think you're really happy about it. Yeah. So I, I think this uh, sets up really well for Gara, makes it very awkward for Camelon to deal with the Frothing Berserker. Yeah, Frothing's still protected. You know, Gara's still, you know, Camelon, for all we, you know, Gara knows, Camelon doesn't even have a weapon to activate this battle cry, but uh, yeah. Oh, wait, with Ravening Ghoul, I, pa Ooh. It, is Patches? No, pa Patches has been used already for Camelon, right? No, I don't think Patches has been. Uh, it is multi Buccaneer isn't Yeah, it? okay. It's weird though. Did we see the Patches come out? I don't believe we did. I don't remember. Maybe, maybe it, it, it must be us that just don't remember it. I yeah. can't imagine him playing I this without the Patches. I can't imagine playing the Pirates without the, the, patches. the Patches. But uh, that's a huge top deck. The Ravaging Ghoul there allows him to clean up the entire board. And uh, yeah, he's now ahead on board. I, I would totally upgrade here, I think, and uh, try to set uh, my opponent down to 15, 15 yeah. by, by next turn. It's huge. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I kind of agree that missing that upgrade there was... I mean, I don't see the reason to save it. Um, maybe he wants to get a little bit greedy with it, but... Um, yeah, it's gonna yeah. get punished with the the you know the subsequent turns that we have from uh, Gara coming down. Exactly. Uh, you, you're still exactly able to uh, put down Gara to uh, 15 here, but we could have had Gara at what two two damage mid, so at uh, 13 instead, and I think that would almost just with a two power weapon in play here, he would have nine, eleven, twelve in play, so it would have been very close to lethal here if he just upgraded last turn. I just don't see this upgrade being a ton better than doing it on that weapon, considering that you're gonna play always gonna play Dragon and Crusher on this turn, for example. Yeah, and all of a sudden, you know, Gara has the you know he has the resources in hand, but that nine nine is just so hard to deal with with yeah. you know Dragon Warriors cutting execute from their decks. Yeah, um, e execute uh, going down to uh, two mana was not that big of a deal for the slower control warrior decks. They don't really care about the mana usage of spending two instead of one most of the time. But for these tempo type warriors, that's huge and just like reason enough that you can't run the card anymore. Yeah, it was a, it was an effective nerf in getting you know Dragon Warrior kind of balanced and. and Kind of falling back, you know, in power level a little bit. You're just giving deck some weakness that uh, it was val very all around good at most things before, but uh, mm -hmm. now when you're like, okay, so how do I beat uh, the dragon warriors? You can point like flame roofed faceless and be like, yeah, this card's pretty great. Exactly. Yep. Stuff like that. Very good point. And Gara, I mean, Kalman cycling his uh, Zerg Rake there. Uh, drawing the War Axe in this upgrade, maybe saving this upgrade could end up uh, paying off dividends for him here. Yeah. He's pretty sad he doesn't get to go with 9 to the face, but still, he's, he's in great great shape here. Yeah, I like the, you know, I like the let's play the board game approach by Camlin there and, and not just going full, you know, full face with the upgrade. Uh, he's still very far ahead on board. He has a 9-6 on board that, again, is very hard to deal with for Dragon Warriors that don't run any type of hard removal. And Gara just forced to trade hey, away. Uh, here we see Gara is uh, not expecting this upgrade to come down here. Yeah. He thinks he's in great shape with that Frothing Berserk. He's going to get punished dearly here by this upgrade. Yeah, just with Kavlan getting super boarded for his, uh, I guess you can say, tech choices because it looks like a very normal pirate warrior except for the one upgrade we've seen. I mean, I mean, it warrior. looks like a very normal drag. Yeah, dragon yeah. warrior with just an upgrade. I and mean, you know, Gara up to this point has probably just believed that this was a true mirror match, but uh, Kamlin's just throwing in that tech card. You know, whether it's a hybrid, you know, between pirates and dragons, we don't know yet. Maybe it's just a a one of tech inclusion that you know Kamlin decided to, to uh, throw in there. Hmm, so if you're Gara now, the most mana efficient play would be uh, your Stasher Drake, Fierce Monkey, but that way, oh well, Kamlin would be one of lethal, but I think you have to take the painful trade here with Korkron into um, the Asher Drake. Yeah, it hurts, but uh, I, I agree that, uh, you know, oh, oh, god. oh my god, that's second yeah. Dragonite Crusher. I guess we can wrap it up there, but I really think that... Uh, this fire war axe was such a huge. I think this would have been a very different uh, play if it wasn't for him saving the upgrade, as we actually kind of criticized him for saving yeah. it first, and then uh, 
Also, just having that four power war axe is so big in this matchup. Asher Drake, Black Ring Corruptor, Frothing Berserker, Fierce Monkey. Yeah. Just, just getting a one tick up. Maybe that's a, you know, maybe that's a tech inclusion that people aren't really factoring in. But yeah, to win these Dragon Warrior Mirrors, which is a deck that we probably expect a lot of people to be bringing. You know that the four health minions are really hard to deal with, and having that you know yeah. that extra weapon attack charge is uh, paying dividends for Camlin there. Yeah, yeah, and also just like going into other decks, there's Imkang bosses in Renal Lock. There are Tomb Pillagers. Every deck these days pretty much plays Asher Drake as well. Exactly. I'm, I I can get behind that. Fire Warx with upgrade is really really strong. And what does Gara do here? So Gara has uh, Paladin and. Paladin and uh, Shaman. Shaman. So he decides to go with Paladin as his uh, counter to this this Dragon Warrior list by Camlin here. Uh, we see the Doomsayer. We see the Wild Pyromancer. So we don't know yet if he's playing some type of control list, some type of Murloc list. Um, but I, I like to assume that he's going to keep this Doomsayer here. That's a key card in this matchup for you know swinging yeah. the tempo back in your favor. Uh, so, like, 99% uh, of the rest of the community, I have not played any Paladin. Oh, well, I played the first data set came out, but uh, from what I've heard from people that have been exploring uh, Paladin a little bit more, that uh, Murloc Paladin with Finya is actually quite good. We see Curator here, which makes me believe that it would be a, a, a Murloc Paladin. Yeah, we uh, see the Curator, we see the Bluegill there, so he's deciding to go with some type of... Uh, Murloc theme with, with this curator that also I'm assuming has Azur Drakes in the deck as well. Yeah. Although, I don't know how, if I love this matchup. For playing this a lot from the warrior side, well, this was prior to, uh, uh, to Mean Streets of Gadsden. Uh, I actually found that the Murloc Paladin deck had like lots of trouble with the big guys from. Uh, uh, from Dragon Warrior, like Draconid Crusher is really a pain to deal with. You like need to spend an equality on that, and you only have that many Elder Beast Peacekeepers for so many big threats. There's like Blackwing Corruptors, also Core Chrono Elite is just to take a lot of damage from that. You, your most efficient answer to Core Chrono Elite is True Solar Champion, but then you take eight. So yeah, very good points. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. This this matchup feels a little bit. Uh, Iffy from the Paladin side. Then again, I'm not the most experienced in it. So, And Camlin here, looking at his hand here, so he could go the all-in play, which would be to either play the War Axe, coin out the upgrade, or do play the... Uh, no, the Alex Strauss Champion does not have activation. So that is the only true way to kill the Doomsayer. He decides, you know what, but I don't really value these 1-1s one too much. It, you, you can't even... Uh, it just go, you can just do 6 damage that way, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Okay, so... It, was, uh, yeah. Actually, has no choice. In yeah, in my head, I was doing the assumption that the 2-3 the, the, the two, the two, would activate as a 3-3 three, three with charge, but yeah, there's no dragons in hand. Probably one of the, you know, one of the counters to playing this upgrade. He's maybe cutting a dragon for it. And, uh, yeah, there's no activation on these, these two drops in his hand here. Yep. Then again, there's not that much punish from Gara. He just has a sad hero power and pass. If there is an activator here for the Alex Ross's champions, that would be huge for Camlin, but uh, sadly doesn't pick it up. And here we see he plays Bloodsail Cultist as well, which makes this. I feel like we're we're trying to uh, like put in a lot of uh, synergy with like not that many cards. Like we're trying to play. Enough weapons, enough pirates, enough dragons, and sometimes your draw just looks like this. Where, yeah, yeah. you lose, <laughs> all, you lose all the beauty these. of the dragon synergy. You lose the beauty of the of the pirate synergy by uh, <laughs> trying to mix them all in together. Um, and he just goes for the you know the smork plan of you know let's coin out this Corcoran, start hitting face. Hopefully, at top deck my you know one of my dragonoid crushes by turn six. And like you mentioned earlier, super super hard for the paladins to deal with if they have to waste an outdoor you know on something else early on. And Gara's going to play the blue gill here, you know, double trade, and uh, again, develop the hero power token. He yeah, also, coming in this game, this uh, Fire War X is probably going to get in for a lot of damage, seeing what the hand looks like. Yeah, he, he's being greedy with it for sure. He's definitely trying to maximize the value from these, uh, you know, these upgrade effects. Yeah, I, I do think that makes a lot of sense, because uh, seeing how Gara is this slower kind of Murloc Paladin, you expect it to be uh, like forbidden healings in this deck, and uh, if you know you're playing against that card, you 
need to make sure that you just don't throw any damage at his face because it actually comes with a huge risk. It's not like against Rogue where you just, if you can count up enough damage, yeah, you can have lethal after a couple of turns. But in this matchup, you really have to take into account that your opponent can like mid-game just heal for 14 or something. So I, I agree with him being a little bit greedy with this weapon. And how do you feel about this Azur Drake list or this Curator list? Do you think it's, you know, it's definitely a slower version of of the Murloc Pally, because I'm assuming he's cutting some other type of early cycle, like maybe the Acolytes to fit the Drakes yep. and the Curator package in. So in this meta that we're now getting, you know, faster and faster, is it, you know, is it tough to now fit this Drake-Curator combo in, or is that something that still kind of works out well? I, I feel like the deck is uh, could be all right, but... Uh, I, I agree that the the curator package seems incredibly greedy in a meta like this. Um, just doesn't seem like in a deck that is gonna play this much from behind that you're gonna. It seems very optimistic to think that you're gonna be able to uh, play this slow, grindy Asher Drake package. Look at this huge turn coming up for Calman mm -hmm. here. You can stay on curve with the you know the second blood sail and the the first. Uh, Alex Straza champion, and does he have lethal over two turns if he just ignores board entirely? Um, he, he gets him for 11 this turn, puts him down to six. Yeah, that is, that, that that would be lethal if there is no taunt, no heal from uh, Gara. Because here's what Kamlin could be saying. He could say, you know what, I'm going to create a board that's so hard to deal with that if you have a quality consecrator, if you have Wild Pyromancer of quality, sure, you're dealing with my board, but I still have this five attack weapon, I still have a three attack charger coming down next turn. You're not able to both deal with my board and heal up out of lethal range. Yeah. So Camlin's right now going through all that, all those numbers, all the math. He's probably trying to figure out, you know, should I, should I go this route? And it's 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 the right route in my opinion to just yeah ignore board and and get that damage into face. And Camlin sees it. He sees the line, and uh, let's see if he decides to trade off with the weapon here. I mean, I wouldn't fault him for it, but I think if he just sees, you know, yeah, he sees yeah. the. Faces the place. I, I totally agree with your argument. What uh, came up in my mind first was, of course, to just like, do, do they you have such a clean way to clear this Asher Drake, which usually, usually is a very, very scary minion. Mm -hmm. But uh, in this situation, uh, going face and setting up lethal, uh, I, I really, really like this line. Yeah. And uh, Gara, what can he do here? Can he, uh, can he somehow just go with the Consecrate Forbidden Healing, or can he somehow go with the Equality Forbidden Healing? It just feels like it's playing to lose. You just go quality and then forbidden healing for only 8 HP. He goes the Consecrate route. He hopes there's no more charging damage in hand. Yeah, I, I, I feel like, okay, maybe you survive one more turn if you go for Consecration, uh, forbidden healing. But then again, what are you doing next turn? You're probably just... So you're gonna lose eventually if you take that line. If you if you instead don't die this turn and then come for been healing for 14, I think you're in great shape to win the game. But uh, sadly for Gara, Kamlan has it, and uh, Kamlan's up 2-0 with this really interesting hybrid uh, pirate uh, dragon warrior. Yeah, I mean, I I want to see more of it. I want to see if there's yeah. maybe South Sea deckhand in there. Like mm -hmm. I want to see what pirates he has to really, you know, throw those blood sail cultists in the deck. So wait, we I. I would guess that there's no South Sea deck hands, considering that we saw Ravaging Ghoul in the first uh, in the yeah. first game. I mean, he's got to be cutting something because he's all, he's got all these late game dragons. He's got you know he, yeah. I'm assuming I'm assuming the the South Sea deck hands not in the list, uh, which makes me question is the Blood Sail Cultist getting activation all that often? But uh, it's working mm -hmm. out so far. So yeah. okay, so I have a question here. We're, I'm looking at Camelon's hand and I see the Fireworks, Alex was a champion. Those groups are obviously great. Mm -hmm. Dragonite Crusher. I, not really what you want to have in your opener in this matchup, but would you just keep it here to have the consistency of having a dragon to, for the Alex Ross as champion? You know, I, I would not fault him for keeping it. So what happened last game where he had, you know, those two beautiful two drops in his hand or, you know, early on, but didn't have activation until I think turn four. Um, I would not fault him for, for keeping it, but he decides to throw both the Alex Ross as champion and the Dragonite Crusher Whoa. away. Wow, just keep the War Axe. I mean, it, it kind of pays off. He has a turn one here. Um, and he has the, you know, he has the war accent to upgrade, to deal with totem golem if that were in uh, Gara's hand. VLPS, the the day you see me mulliganing Alex Truss as champion ever, <laughs> it, we need like talk to me. That that is not a thing I would. Yeah, is that not a card that just deals with small time buccaneer, deals with tunnel trog, deals with everything yeah. in the game essentially on turn two? It's, it's for the reason it's the best two drop probably in the game. Yeah. But uh, Camlin sees a different line, and he, you know, he kind of gets paid off. He, you know, he has the one drop here, the uh, Sir Finley. And what do you choose here? Do you go with Steady Shot or Life Tap? 
I th I think that most people looking at this think that the steady shot, like that life tap, is just stupid. But I actually, f I'm I'm not sure about this, but uh, I I think that life tap is pretty reasonable to take here. This match will actually get since you trade so much in the early game with these decks because you can't let. Uh, both these decks snowball really, uh, really hard if you ever if you ever get bored. Mm -hmm. So s since you're trading that much, uh, it's not unreasonable to think that a warrior would run out of cards. Uh, it's very rarely a race where you see where steady shot is at its best. So I'm not sure about uh, taking the steady shot there. But it's probably also taking life tap against a deck with lava burst is always yeah. pretty questionable. Yeah, it's definitely a good point. You know, he maybe Camlin sees the line where uh, sure I might run out of resources, but at the same time do I want to be life tapping against a deck that has so much potential burn damage. He decides to go with steady shot and uh, you know I, I can see him going one way or the other. I don't fault him for taking it. Yeah. Um and yeah Camlin just you know look at that look at his hand right now. He's you know imagine yeah. having an Alex Strauss champion on board right now. He decided to throw it away but he decides you know what let me let me take advantage of having this upgrade. Let me just start going to town yeah, here. Get you. He's got some good plays coming up. He's going to curve out and you know into turn four uh, and five. So yeah, this this is terrible for Gara. His real his only real play here is Feral Spirits and Corcoran Elite. This Corcoran Elite is just one of the MVP cards against Shaman. It takes care of. It was even better back in the day when it also took care of Mana Tide Totem. But still, it just deals with everything that is not a Totem Golem. It's almost minion. so scary to play this Feral Spirit. It always just feels like Dragon Warriors have Corcoran on turn four, at least in my experience. So yeah. just even that's probably the hesitation here for Gara. Is, you know, he's he's thinking, do I really want to throw these away to the weapon and a potential Corcoran with charge? And, and say, even if there isn't a Corcoran here and uh, Camlin just plays this other 4-drop, well, uh, working under Gar's assumption that it would be active, like a Twilight Garden is also just unbeatable for his hand here. Gar is in a really rough place. But one thing I wanted to kind of talk about uh, that I thought was pretty interesting was uh, actually Gar's turn 1, where he coined out the Jade Claws. Uh, I feel like he had no 1-drop follow-up to that, which is usually what you want. I may... Now it was quite some time ago, but uh, do you agree with the coin jade clause on one? It felt like a play that not even that great on board and gives you like a it's a huge risk to fall behind. Yeah, by I, a I lot. didn't like it myself. And if 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 uh, Camlin kept that Alex Charger champion, it could have been a huge punish. That Alex Charger champion could have potentially done you know nine damage to face yeah. with the you know with Gar being overloaded on the follow up. So. Yeah, I kind of see where Gar pointing that out was, you know, he, he was kind of scared that he was, you know, he had no board at all and he had kind of weapons and burn in hand, but yeah. it did it could have set him potentially very far behind if Camlin had that uh, Alex Strauss champion. Yeah, and uh, Cam Camlin decides to go with the Twilight Guardian and his hand is just looking fantastic. Yeah. Blackwing Corruptor on 5 into 4 and 2. It's but, yeah, it's beautiful, and uh, I mean, Gara does have answers, so he's got this answer here with the Flame Tongue. He's got the Black Wing Corruptor answer with the Jade Lightning, and and these Jade Lightnings, you know, they they I found them to be a better card than people expected. You know, yeah. they they're such a good tempo swing where like, you know, you see Fireball six damage, you see Jade Lightning four damage, you're like, ah, oh, it's just not a great card, but you know, the body that it develops behind the Jade Lightning, you know, after yeah. playing two Jade Claws or after playing, you know, the first Jade Lightning, you know, it, it, it gets significant and it, and it helps out a lot in, in these tempo-based matchups. The, the the thing I undervalued about Jade Lightning was I felt like, yeah, Jade Golems are looking kind of weak in Shaman. It doesn't seem like you can get these huge Jade Golems, but the, but the big thing is, right, how they work, interact with Flame Tank Totem. It doesn't matter if you're just building a 2-2 two -two or a 1-1 one -one of your Jade Lightning, just how they... How many ways you got to uh, make use of these small bodies in uh, Shaman makes uh, the four damage plus just a random body, however big it is, exactly. is just such a big deal. Just makes Flame Tongue a better card. Just makes your weapons a better tool with with trading up with with the small tokens. So yeah, I definitely agree that those cards have turned out better than a lot of people have expected. And uh, we see here now, Camlin with. Um, you know, he has this weapon, but he doesn't have board control right now at this point, and uh, he does have some more charges in, in his hand to be able to t still fight for this board. Yep. And if, if you're Camlin here, do you ever start, you know, considering, uh, you know, getting him down into that Draconoid range? You know, you got to kind of be scared of those Maelstrom portals. You know, a lot of mm -hmm. Shamans are teching in too, and, you know, just a simple totem roll kind of crushes this board and puts those Draconoids out of that 9-9 range. Um, with having... Um 
before drawing the Asher Drake, I think I would be more inclined to try to like actually uh, kill Gara as uh, ASAP. But uh, with the Asher Drake draw, I think you can. Uh, well, Maelstrom Portal with spell power is obviously a huge deal here. But barring that, I think you're in pretty good shape to just play the value game versus uh, Gara here. Yeah, but this is also where I think that uh, having life tap would have been more impactful than the steady shot. We've seen steady shot being used once so far and not very relevant. Where it would have obviously been better as as a life tap. And like seeing the board look like this, uh, there's a lot of trading going on. I think I would much rather see Kamlan with a life tap here. But of course, it's hard to uh, know exactly how a game is gonna play out. out. Exactly. But just usually I feel like there's a lot of trading going on in this matchup. Again, we see these, these Jade minions just building up in, in size. And yeah. now, you know, just a simple play of a, of a two attack weapon uh, develops this 3-3 three, three body that can be traded into by, you know, in, in conjunction with the patches or the totem. So uh, the Shaman now starting to pull ahead on board and, and Camlin's reaching that breaking point where he's like, you know what, maybe it's time for me to just start Ignoring the board, using my steady shot, and uh, going face. He decides, you know what? Let me let me hold off a couple more turns. He still has, you know, the ability to control this board in a in a in a fashion here, and uh, he decides to do some trading. I actually think that Camlin this turn made a made a small mistake. He decided to go with the Asher Drake before playing the Soft's first mate, which you usually want to do if there's like some two drop. You would rather play than these two pirates. But as far as as far as I can tell, there's no two drop that you would play over these pirates. Like Fire Warax is debatable, but I, I'm not even sure uh, that's a, that's a lot better. And uh, if he started playing Asher Drake and actually draw into the patches, which would be like yeah, absolutely terrible. So yeah, uh, I think I would have went with a pirate first that turn. Although it is a close call because Fire Warax would. Probably a little bit better than the pirates. Yeah, maybe it's one of those things he overlooked. You know, we're now on turn yeah. seven. Sometimes you forget that patches hasn't yet been drawn from your deck. So, definitely oh, something yeah. that I agree with you that you know maybe getting that guaranteed patches taken out of the deck with it, it's a pirate just, was better. It, it's just you're so far ahead, right? So you don't really need to take that risk. That that's at least how, how I think about it. Yeah, and finally, Gara playing the the fourth and probably final Jade uh, card in his deck and. You know, developing that 4-4 four, four body, now it's just a, a point where yeah. probably Camlin cannot take board back from Gara. Uh, it's a matter of, you know, doing some math and seeing if there's enough damage, you know, through charge. He's already played, I believe, both Corcorons. Um He does have, I believe, both Alex Strauss's champions still. I'm assuming there's no Grimash in this deck. It seems like yeah. it's a little bit too fast for that type of play style. Yeah, the, and also, one thing about Camlin's deck is we mentioned how much it's built around synergy which means that at this point where it's kind of out of cards there are so many there are so many cards that you draw that are just like dead like blood sail cultist doesn't do anything there are like all, all your dragon cards like blackwing corruptor and twilight guardian those cards doesn't really do much in situations like these so i think it's looking really really grim for camelon here gary is uh, taking control over the game with his uh, jade volumes yeah, and Kamlin seeing that his only option is to ignore the board and start dealing damage to face and hope that Gara does not roll those 25% to taunt totem rolls <laughs> in on the first and, one. There yeah. it is. And immediately. Although, even without taunt totem rolls, I think... Did uh, not look good, yeah. Yeah, I don't think there is a draw. There's no dragon in hand to activate those two Alex Straza champions. There's probably no rag in this list as well, so... Uh, yeah, there is Arcanite Reaper, though. That is interesting. Yeah. I mean, oh. it makes sense with the upgrade, right? Yeah. And Camlin just seeing that he is dead next turn and conceding there and losing finally with this, with this warrior list that seems pretty unique, and I like it. Yeah. Yeah, let's see if Gara can attempt the, the, with a reverse sweep on Camlin's lineup. What, what does Camlin has left? He has so his rogue band. And so. priest. Priest and... Shaman himself, I believe. Yeah, so Priest is generally pretty good again against Shaman. Uh, we don't know if Gara plays like a, a Black Paw or something like that. Th th those cards get... Yeah, oh, actually, <laughs> the first thing we see there is a... Uh, uh, that card's really good in the matchup. I don't think you keep it in your opener, but... Uh, yeah, very strong in those control matchups. Yeah, 
I actually been playing quite a lot of J Druid myself on uh, ladder lately, and uh, AA is just a card that I snap keep against uh, things like priest and druid mirrors. Mm -hmm. I think I think cards uh, great in these like slower, but like J Druid is also a very very different deck. But uh, just speaks of the strength of Aya that you're actually keeping a six drop in your opener in some matchups. Yeah, and Gara with the the two totem golems there definitely cards you want to have in this matchup yeah. early to trade with those. Smaller, but still, you know, strong Dragon Priest minions. Yeah. It uh, All the deckhands and uh, small time buccaneers very, very quickly get outclassed by the size of uh, the Priest minions. So you want these uh, big uh, big minions like Golem, Spirit, Faceless, Aya. It's actually like exactly the cards that uh, Gara has picked up. Yeah, and uh, one thing that Dragon shamans or dragon priests rather do not want to see is is falling super far behind on board now because a lot of dragon priests are cutting that dragon fire potion which everyone was kind of talking up to be the yeah. the thing that priests needed to come you know the kind of the light bomb that priests needed to come back and and have a special AOE but a lot of dragon priests are cutting it now you know it yeah. feels like the meta is fast feels like there's a lot of mirror matches there's a lot of azur drakes in just every deck and uh, dragon priests are kind of just saying you know what let's Let's win through tempo in, in, in minions rather than having this comeback mechanic in the form of a big AoE. And uh, yeah, falling behind against a mid range shaman or an aggro shaman is one of the ways that priests just lose this matchup because they just don't have ways to, to come back when they're yeah. this far behind on board. We, Camel is gonna do his best to attempt to just play, try to play bigger minions than mm -hmm. uh, Gara can and come back that way, but. It's it's not a great seat to be in, and uh, I don't mind the uh, ooh what a good roll here. So he, yeah, he can afford that's to incredible. Just stay unoverloaded, and uh, what this allows him to do on turn five is you know if he plays a second. So you had to assume that he played this. Ooh, I don't know if I like that trade myself. Uh, I could see it being a value. Okay, I could I could take the uh, the value trade there. But uh, what I was mentioning is Gara knows that. You know, Camlin coined out this four drop. He probably has another four drop coming down, whether it's yeah. Twilight Dra or Twilight Guardian or Second Priest of the Feast. And now he's able to develop this fam Flame Wraith fe uh, face list as well as you know face tank the second minion that Camlin plays here and use Lightning Bolt to take it out and still keep his board intact. Yeah, I actually loved it, that value trade myself. If uh, the one punish for doing the value trade is right, the uh, Holy Nova on the not this turn but the following turn, mm -hmm. but it. Then your opponent is not playing a four drop because then you can just trade into whatever four drop he plays, and the whole Nova is not as effective. And if he just heals and passes, you have Flame Weave Faceless, and uh, then your opponent, oh my god, then your opponent's whole Nova is not that effective because he's staring down a 7 7. Yeah, I guess but the more I think about it, I do like it myself, just based on the fact that even a Shadow or Pain is a bigger punish for the, you know, leaving the 3 4 body alive. Yeah. So yeah, I, I kind of like the you know now that I think more on it, I think the value trade was the correct play, and yeah, that was a huge top deck there. You can just develop even more board, and Camlin just forced to uh, luckily top deck the Shadow or Pain there, and, and still be able to deal with two of those big minions here on Gara's side. Yeah, but uh, Gara is not stopping. He has it, his his draw is so great here. With what do, you, uh, what do you do here? Do you do you go with the Feral Spirits or do you do, do you just Jade Lightning face? I, I know it's a resource battle. You know you don't want to use all your resources on face and just lose board control. But at the same time, Gara sees this A of Black Paw in his hand for next turn. But uh, he decides, you know what? Let me save my resources and just go with the Feral Spirits. I I I think that's close. Um... Uh, the Jade Lightning would be a 1-1, one, one, I'm pretty sure, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think it's close, but eventually, I, just like doing this play and having Jade Lightning for Bookworm or Blackwing Corruptor or even Draconid Operative together with the Spirit Claws, uh, I think I like it a little bit better than uh, just Jade Lightning to the face. Yeah, uh, AI Black Paw is going to be like really good at pretty much any stage in this game, so... Yeah, you know Dragon Priests aren't running in Tomb, so it's going to get value when it does, um, but for now, you know, Gar decides to keep things slow and, and just, you know, save those Jade Lightnings and those Burn Spells for the the minions that are going to be coming down on the Dragon Priest side. Yeah. The card Gar is really looking for here to just, like, lock up the game. He's really in, he's already in great shape, but with the Flame Tank Totem, uh, that card is just against 
the entire metagame right now, I would say, is such an amazing card, and it's like really, really hard to lose games where you've gotten ahead with the Flame Tongue Totem. A uh, huge top deck here, and you know Gar is crossing his fingers that he gets life tap, and there it is. Yeah. Um, it's tempting to get that steady shot. You know, you have so much burn on board in your hand, rather, and you have the spell power totem, but I think taking the life tap is the, the safe, surefire way when you're ahead on board against yeah. the priest. You know, like I mentioned earlier, there's no dragon fire potions. You just don't want to lose this board control. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you that uh, when behind you try to sheath them out with uh, the steady shot, but when you're already in great shape like this and can just play the board control battle with the uh, life tap, I think that's a much, much safer option. Yeah, and Gar sees the line, and again, this board is just so frustrating for Camlin. Uh, you know, if you had dragon fire potion, it'd be a, an easy easy thing to deal with, but uh, he doesn't have that in his hand, or nor in his deck probably, and uh, decides to play his biggest minion, his uh, Draconoid Operative. Um, not this is pretty bad, but I think you can take the Maelstrom Portal and try to combo it together with a Holy Nova yeah. coming up. I think that's your best option. You're still going to be behind on board if you do that. But do you ever Maelstrom here and then just have a Holy Nova you know, cleanly next turn? Because right now... If you're just a Zerg Draking and Maelstroming next turn, you're not clearing off those three health minions. I know you're foreshadowing uh, a Holy Nova coming down the following turn, but at the same yeah. time, do you have another way to deal with those three health minions next the, turn? The big punish for playing Maelstrom Portal here would be a he Healing Totem, right? And uh, Well, now no, with the Life Tap. Oh, right. There's a Life Tap there. Then I think I like that a, l a little bit more. Uh, healing... Sure, if you're afraid of dying, but I don't think you can play that safe in this situation. So I think I agree with uh, going for just a Maelstrom Portal there and see if I can draw. I guess you could always play them in conjunction with one another next turn and just get more value from the you know the Maelstrom yeah. itself. Yeah, but the the way I would want to do is if I port if I portal here, I can hold in over next turn and say if I draw three drops, say the Talon yeah. Freeze or something, or I can actually drop. be yeah. ahead on board instead of just clearing whatever. Yeah, that was my line of thought as well, yeah. but uh. Doesn't get a two drop or a three drop, so this probably you know worked out the same in the end. Um, and Camlin has the I'm assuming gonna go with the the Maelstrom Holy Nova combo to yeah. clean up a lot of this board. Actually, clean up the entire board. Yeah. Actually, this might be this might be the comeback if uh, Gara just has a uh, some really bad draws here. He already drew the patches, which is obviously not what you want to see. Yeah, we haven't seen the second Jade Lightning. Uh -huh. We haven't seen either Lava Burst on Gara's side yet. So those are two key cards that Gara is going to be looking for at this point in the game. And uh, uh, Also two Flame Tank Totems left with, I would assume, is like quite a lot of uh, Shardgers in the deck. Ooh, there's one of them. And there is the Flame Tongue. Do you ever get greedy here and just save this Flame Tongue? Do you ever do the math and say, you know, if I draw Spear Claws next turn, how much damage do I have? I have one plus... Because you know the South Sea is not connecting. If you if you ever just throw the you know flame tongue and the patches down here, you know the South Sea is never connecting to face. Nah, I, I think you need the uh, need the damage from the deck hand as well here. Yeah, you don't have enough to be honest. If you get Stone Tusk Bore or well a Charger here, I I totally go for the fl flame tongue totem. But I think it's uh, necessary to same flame tongue totem until you can get two Chargers in with it, because otherwise I have a hard time seeing Gara having enough damage. Yeah, I completely agree. I think he has to just pass here. I don't mind the lightning bolt to face, just to, you know, save some mana for next turn to be able to, you know, use resources. But uh, yeah, uh, he's gonna have to top deck some type of weapon. I think Jade Claws. How much does that give him? That gives him two plus seven nine damage from hand. Yeah, which is yeah. not enough if if got, if Comlin, you know. Plays this smart and heals face every yeah, single yeah. turn going we, forward. We, we, we have to imagine that Kamlin is not going to miss a single heal to himself here. Um, I think this turn you could uh, go for Draconid Operative. The best case scenario if you, if you pick up uh, Feral Spirit. Uh, but even if you pick up a random spell, you can go with Priest of the Feast plus that spell next turn to uh, heal. So I think the Draconid Operative here is uh, the best option. Lightning Bolt's pretty I good. I don't know that I would have minded the Drake, just because the Drake allows you to draw one of your two Wormist Agents and heal face. Yeah, I, I guess you also have a, you have a Twilight Guardian left in the deck too. Uh, but he, if you think that you're going to survive this turn, I think that the Draconid Operative is a better play. But it's a somewhat big if as well. 
you should also probably start doing the math on, you know, how do I kill this guy, you know, before he kills me. So, you know, Camlet at this point also wants to start doing some math, seeing how, you know, how he can start racing Gara. Um, he chooses the Lightning Bolt, cleans the yeah. board up, and yeah, that's more than enough power next turn to end this game. Ooh, Let's and see. if he taps into Spear Claws, does he have enough mana to cast it all? Yeah, seven. No, that would not be. Does he need to cast be. the patches, though? Does he need to cast the patches, or can he just cast the South Sea plus the Jade Lightning plus the Spear Claws and Flame Tongue? Lava Burst is one of the. It's a little bit of ah, lethal. Oh, doesn't that. draw a weapon, though. That is gonna. That's a sick comeback from uh, from Camlin's side. Yeah. Because I, I can't imagine with uh, Gara throwing away this much damage that it can never uh, do lethal here. That that was a really really sick comeback from the priest deck. It looked like throughout the entire game, your Scar start was insane with the double totem golem into faceless. Into oh, even life even tunnel well. trog faceless. Th that was sick. Yeah, and Camlin, you know, showing that you know. Preparation and maybe bringing something unique with this pirate, dragon, yeah. upgrade warrior, whatever we want to call it, kind of pays off. And uh, Camlin taking the first win in Group D yeah. over Gara. Yeah, really, really convincing, convincing too. He had like the, I would say that the upgrades in his uh, pirate deck or uh, pirate dragon deck is like won him at least one game. You single handedly the mirror match, for yeah, sure, yeah, exactly, and. But also, it's the strength of Priest that I don't think a lot of people are bringing to this tournament, but in matchups like against Shaman, how, how strong it really can be. Yeah, it's been one of those decks that, you know, people are always scared to play it because we're kind of still in that yeah. stage where, you know, Priest wasn't so good not too long ago. But uh, we saw even in the last series, uh, Super JJ winning an unfavorable matchup with the Dragon Priest versus the Rogue, I believe. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Dragon Priest showing again that it is a deck to contend with. And, uh, That'll be it for the first game of Group D. Yep. Yep. And I believe next we'll have Mr. Yagoot versus Pavel. Yeah, that, that's going to be a good one, too. Very good follow-up. Yagoot, yeah, just been crushing ladder recently on stream. Just like Legend 1 on several servers, as far as I know. And Pavel, new world champion, and been doing really well. Yeah, not only world champion, well. but subsequent success in multiple tournaments thereafter. So. Yeah. Should be a great game, good battle, and uh, we'll see how it fares between the two of them. Yeah, and with that said, we're going to a quick break, so we'll be back with that match. Uh, thanks for watching, guys.